should you fix your mortgage for two years or five years? I have wrestled with this myself multiple times this year, and I can't make your decision for you, but I can give you the framework that I use to decide, and at the end, talk about one factor that might make your decision for you. At the moment, it's cheaper to borrow for two years than five years, which historically is totally backwards. Borrowing for longer should cost more. But according to Rightmove, if you're a home buyer with a 10% deposit, the average two year fix costs 6.2%, whereas a five year fix costs just 5.66%. That's only an average and doesn't take account of fees, but it makes the point that we're in this unusual situation where a shorter fix will give you more flexibility and a lower cost. And people want this flexibility at the moment because the situation has completely flipped. A couple of years ago, people wanted to lock in low rates for as long as they possibly could. But now they're wary about fixing because they feel that today's higher rates could fall back, leaving them paying a rate that's not attractive anymore. Which is why brokers say that a two year fix is the most common product they're seeing people go for. So does that mean that two years is the obvious slam dunk choice? Well, no, because there are two complicating factors. The first of those factors is product fees, also known as arrangement fees. And this is separate from the monthly interest payments that you need to make. It's a cost that you incur when taking out the mortgage. And it can be a fixed amount or it can be a percentage of the total loan. Now, rather than forcing you to pay them this fee in cash, lenders will normally allow you to add it to the balance of the mortgage that you're borrowing. So if you're borrowing £100,000 and there's a £1,000 product fee, they'll normally allow you to effectively borrow £101,000 and pay interest on that amount. And this is what most people choose to do. So you don't see it come out of your pocket as cash, but it is still a real cost that can have some major implications. Keep the math simple. Let's imagine that you borrow £100,000 and an interest rate of 5% on a two year fix. So your interest repayment, £5,000 per year. But for a buy to let loan, you might also be paying a product fee of 3% of the amount that you've borrowed, which would be £3,000. Let's then say that two years later, mortgage rates have come down. So you move to a cheaper product. Good news, going for two year fix was the right decision. Or was it? Because at the point of taking out that next product, you then need to pay another product fee of another 3%. It'll actually be a bit higher by now because of compounding, but to keep things simple, let's say it's another £3,000. Mathematically, what that means is that after taking account of those two sets of fees, it means that you need to switch to a rate of no more than 4% for the second three years to come out ahead compared to if you just stuck with a rate of 5% for a five years fix the entire way through because that would only involve one set of fees. So by going for a shorter fix, you need to not just be making a bet that prices will come down, you need to be making a bet that they'll come down enough to more than compensate for the extra fees you'll be paying. Now, not all product fees are that high. Some are just a fixed amount, like £995. But for buy-to-let and specialist loans, you can get even higher. You do see product fees of up to 5%, which obviously for large loans can be absolutely massive. So working with a broker to find the right combination of interest rate and product fee based on your needs is really, really important. Another option if you really think rates will fall soon is to forget fixing completely and go for a trackable. This would allow you to switch as soon as rates come down, but you'd need to choose one with no early repayment charge and one with a low product fee to avoid the issue that I've just mentioned. So that's the first reason that a two year fix is not automatically gonna be the right way to go. But there is a second reason, and that is that for buy to let loans, five years could be your only choice due to stress tests. When you take out a buy to let loan, the mortgage lender will apply a stress test, whereby their assessment of the monthly rent needs to exceed the mortgage payment by a certain margin. The rent normally needs to be at least 125% of the mortgage payment or maybe up to 167% depending on the lender's criteria and your circumstance. And to complicate things further, they won't necessarily calculate them based on the interest rate of the product you're actually taking out. They might use a higher rate to protect them in case rates go up in the future. And this is where it becomes relevant for the two versus five year conversation because lenders tend to use a higher notional rate when they're stress testing a two year fix than they do for a five year fix. For example, the lender Paragon for two year fixes uses a rate of 7.6% and for a five year fix, they use 5.8%. So it might be the case that when using the two year calculation, the rent doesn't exceed the mortgage payment by enough of a margin. 
which means that they will effectively reduce the amount that they'll lend to you to make the numbers work. So in that situation, if you went ahead with that product, you'd borrow less and you'd need to put in more cash yourself. So if you didn't want to do that, you'd have to take out the five year product so you could borrow the full amount you wanted. Regardless of whether you're forced into five years or you're still wrestling with whether two or five years is the right choice for you, you should absolutely consult a specialist mortgage broker. But before you do, watch this video next where I share my top tips from over 15 years of taking out a lot of mortgages so you can work with your broker to make smarter decisions.